There Whoa. will be very soon in the future head transplants. Um, this video came out by from a I think it's called Brain Bridge. Brain Bridge released this video. It's an eight minute video where it graphically depicts a head transplant and they say that this could happen in the next eight years <laughs> they can take your head off of your body and put it on another younger body and you will be able to operate it within a certain amount of time afterwards so i sped it up and i shortened it but i just want we're gonna start it i don't know how much we're gonna watch andres but the video uh it's like three minutes and it's sped up but i want you just to start to see this video of head transplants the procedure begins by preparing the donor and recipient bodies. The donor is a brain-dead patient who has a functional body with vital organs in good condition, while the recipient is the patient whose head will be transplanted onto the new body. General anesthesia is administered to both the recipient and the donor. Both patients undergo tracheotomy, with a tube inserted into the trachea to provide respiratory support and facilitate mechanical ventilation. Our proprietary artificial plasma solution is administered to both the recipient and the donor. This solution is designed to keep the brain and body oxygenated, prevent clotting, and allow for safe operation at low temperatures. The recipient's head and the donor body are cooled to approximately 5 degrees Celsius to reduce potential brain damage during the detachment. Guided by advanced real-time molecular and monitoring systems, brain yeah, brain carefully basically. separates the heads from the two and bodies with the help done of a specialized surgical robot. technique that preserves the spinal cord and key blood vessels. Deep incisions are carefully made around the neck to expose the necessary structures, including the carotid, the vertebral gone. arteries, jugular veins, and spine. With the help of specialized AI algorithms, brain bridge tracks both muscles and nerves during surgery to facilitate seamless reattachment. Next, incisions are made in the trachea. Okay, esophagus, that's veins, the part of your body that gets oh, cut off. Oh, yeah. You get drained drained of blood oh my God. your head gets drained of blood and then it gets put onto the other body but that's not all after they have to sew it back on rewarms the recipient's head and provides it with oxygenated blood with the help of its ultra precision surgical instruments brain bridge begins reconnecting the spinal cord esophagus, yeah we gotta reconnect all that stuff other tissues hold on that facilitates communication between the brain and the new body the machine utilizes microsurgery techniques and delicate microscopic adjustments the blood's to gotta go back to your head spinal cord and other tissues to help reconnect the severed neurons brain bridge uh, is some stuff. Okay, I just we can stop here. I can describe the rest. It's like face. If you off. show the next graphic, Andres, Ooh. you also have to do a ah. face transplant. So that you you saw how they took off your neck, mm -hmm. right? And then they put you on the other body. Fortunately, I saw they that. They will also. So now that your head's on the other body, they take off your face. Your your it's it's your brain and your insides that got put on. Right, so you keep the head, and you have your face gets put in, right? What the fuck? Okay, Wait, it's what? it's it's crazy. It's it's crazy. So it's a head transplant, a face transplant. Um, why do the, you transplant your face if you? Yeah, if they're cutting why? your head it's, and moving it to another body. Yeah, well, you gotta watch the video. I don't, I don't we'll link it. It's crazy. Like something at the Nicholas beginning. Cajun, um, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, like the they, the thing they mentioned at the beginning of the video though is that it's killing a guy. No, no, like, no, no. It, it's so the, the brain dead, the brain yeah, dead guy so with healthy organs. Yeah, so the other body is a brain dead or body organ donor, donor right? Okay. So, so he he died where he has brain damage, and he wants to gift his body. So there are a lot of people when they die, they give their bodies to science. I yeah. have a friend with a dear friend that sadly passed away and she donated her body to science. I'm wondering, would somebody like a lot of people do that? I'm wondering if somebody like that that's donating the body to science would be someone that they would experiment on. She was an older, older woman, but like how many young people have a perfectly good body that didn't die by a car accident or a heart attack or drug abuse or whatever available. Right. So stick with me here really quick. We're going to ask all those questions. Hold on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm burning up. One of the several major obstacles to overcome uh, in medicine's inability so far is to adequately, adequately repair nerve and spinal cord damage. So, Brain Bridge, who released this video, is actively working on this procedure that will be completely done by robots. AI will con will do the surgery. It'll learn from its surgeries and do better in the future. I think it takes the recovery period. It's like they keep you in a coma for four weeks. And then wow. you have to like, there's videos about how you have to train your body to like operate again. Your brain will start connecting. It's really, it's super, super bizarre. I don't know if any of you have seen Altered Carbon. Mm -hmm. Andres, you could show the next one. Um, it doesn't have audio, but uh, this show was really great in that you could take out someone's like consciousness and put it in another body and you have that body, but you have your memories. Um, 
And we've all seen, you know, other movies and stuff with kind of versions of this. But uh, you could just be in someone else's body. There's another show uh, called Upload where you could take your consciousness and upload it to like a digital world. And you don't need your body anymore. Um, So if you think about all those kinds of movies and if you think about the future of mankind and how we love to innovate and create stupid crazy shit Mm -hmm. um what is our future going to be like so now remember i just said again there aren't very many young bodies just hanging out there right so what would need to happen in order for that so um in china there's the the what did we call them Uyghurs. oh Uyghurs. Uyghurs. yes so they are um you know, kind of targeted. They have that that camp that they all live in. They're the prisons. Well, so. it's a concentration camp, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, that's trying beating around the bush. Yeah. 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 So they have a concentration <laughs> camp in China mm-hmm. where they have the Uyghurs they and they are iPhones. And are they experimenting on the Uyghurs? <laughs> They've they, already been doing that they for are. a long time. So they take advantage of these people and you know they kill them. <clears throat> they tell them they can't procreate. They can't do anything. And um, so they also there are reports that they also happen to be taking their organs and selling them. Um, on the black market that's why uh or or just taking them and using them and that's why surgeries have gone up and more availability has increased is because they're they're using these people so this is my question i have a couple questions for you guys a would you get a head transplant if you needed it and could afford it b uh if this becomes possible in eight years so in our very relatively young adult lives this becomes a possibility what do you think is going to happen to the future of our society? Because I for sure think that crime is going to go up. People are going to be murdered for their organs and bodies. You know, people that can't afford it, they do the shit they do with our political system. What are they going to do just so that they can live forever? Well, so uh, it's interesting. Walt Disney, I heard he actually froze his head when he died he uh, for, with the hopes of being put on a monkey someday. But even better than that, Wait, like, a monkey. I think yeah, he, he, he wanted to put his head body. on a monkey. Hey guys, I'm he back. He that in the future that he would be able to put his head onto some sort of body. I think a monkey. I don't think it was a monkey, no. but he. I think I'm pretty sure I've read. I, uh, uh, his head's frozen somewhere, though, he fro- right? He his. I think his whole body's frozen somewhere <laughs> in the hopes that he can be recreated. So, you he, want to hear my, so he called that right. <laughs> my, my new favorite uh, theory, I heard somebody float a little while ago. They made the movie Frozen so that people yes. would stop talking about it. Because now every time you Google Disney Frozen, the movie comes up with the princesses, oh, not uh, stories about Disney kept in a, a cryo. Oh. I've heard that too from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom is in QAnon. So I've also heard that same Good theory before. Uh, a Would I have a head transplant? Face, yes. If I could get Brad Pitt, oh, that'd be so awesome. Can you imagine how cool your life would be if you look like Brad you know, Pitt. Rob, well, we so have you're hair supposed- transplants right now. I don't now. need the hair. I need the. Yeah, at that point, you're. What, that's putting lipstick on a pig. If you try and put hair on this and think it's going to fix it, I want Brad Pitt's face. You would. You would. You would keep. I, again, it's confusing in the video, but you'd keep your face. Oh uh, no. Everything else okay. besides your brain and those and those nerves and stuff and the spinal cord that attaches to the other person's spinal cord. That's yours. So I could put my head on Brandon's body. Yes. Okay, then yes. <laughs> I want that. That'd be and, so cool. And, I need to wear tight shirts like that all the time. Fuck yeah. And yeah. you can keep and his hair. Present. Oh, and Ooh. his hair. Well, Hands he's off, got a haircut. Well, I bet his chest hair looks <laughs> just like his I wanna, head I hair. I want to read but, some other like really crazy things to you. Well, real quick, while yeah, we're doing that, the future. Yeah. What scares me is, th- is this the way that the elite, con- I, here we go, conspiratorial, is this the way that the elite continues to live forever? We've this seen Brian Alter Johnson, yeah. right? Yep. Brian Johnson's like swapping blood with his son and yeah. allegedly or- printing organs too. Yeah, we did that so- a couple episodes ago where he's <laughs> sitting there talking to Tucker and he's saying like, uh, Tucker's like, aren't you afraid that like God's going to smite, smite you down? He's like, no. No, I, I, so I there's already this uh, this movement among some of the people within that have wealth, mm-hmm. where they're trying to extend their lives forever. Is right. this the way to do it? And hey, you, I, you know what? My body craps out, so I'll just move myself to a new host. Mm. And then at that point, if we're not, that's what we are. We're hosts. We're not even actual humans anymore. We're just right. mm-hmm. we're just the carrier for them to continue living. Well, on. that's actually the uh, plot of that show that Kelly mentioned, Altered Carbon. I really love that show. At least the first season. The second the one. The first was, season was, was the kind, best. Of, kind of meh. But the whole point is that. Your body is no longer you. They, they, they call bodies sleeves because everybody mm-hmm. just exists as this little disc. It gets inserted into the back of a body. 
Now, the elites have access to clones of their own body, so they always look like themselves, even though they live hundreds and hundreds of years, and they, they basically can just replicate themselves whenever. But there's a whole thing in the show of people going around and they kill other people to get better bodies. Younger okay. bodies, more fit bodies, ones that don't have diseases. And and again, this is to help people that have cancer or whose bodies they can't operate or, or they're paralyzed. But what's going to happen to innocent people in the future? Uh, illegal organ transplants are up to 10%. 10% of transplants are illegal. 75% oh. involving kidneys due to high high demand and low supply the illegal organ trade generates 600 million dollars to 1.2 billion dollars annually huh. okay um kidney transplants uh cost about one hundred fifty thousand dollars. heart transplants can be up expensive over five hundred thousand dollars. traffickers exploit people like this so i am very scared that i mean this would be great medical science to 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 protect someone uh, but like, think about it. Like, this is the stuff of movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. What if the president has cancer and we're like, who wants to donate their body <laughs> to the president of the United States? You know, they're, oh, I forget where it is. I think it's in China again. No, no, sorry. Iran in Iran. They had a, uh, uh, what's it called? Like a, a policy or whatever you got paid. If you like donated, uh, a kidney or an organ, whatever, and so uh, available surgeries were able to go up. The p the problem is is that this would target uh, really poor people mm -hmm. that need money. So they're like, okay, they this is what they do. They give an organ for five thousand dollars, which might not make as much of a difference to you and me. We're like, no, we'll keep our body parts, but someone that might need that money will give their body. So this would need to be so controlled. Yeah. And then what's to say that someone wouldn't live forever? What happens if a king of a country lives forever and they're crazy or they they're bad they become a bad person with all that power like it's just i, I don't know like this freaks I, me out i saw a futuristic um sh a tv show too once where the whole concept <clears throat> of it was there was a police force that was pre uh, preventing people from having kids because they were at this point where the ki uh, people were able to live forever because of this technology where you could um there's like, stop your aging there's a movie in time love, 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 yeah. robots, yeah, love, love, oh. yeah. robots. Yeah. there's a movie in time where you could only live to 25 years old and then you could like barter or exchange time Ooh. uh again upload so here's the other thing would you, so guys would you get a head transplant and then would you donate anything, your body or for, mm. for science? Would you, if it was an option right now, would you say, yeah, I'll give my body for this thing? Or uh, that show upload I was talking about where it's kind of the same thing. They just take your consciousness, they download it, and they put it in a virtual world that you've already paid for and live forever. Would you do that? Not for like science, no. I, but I am yeah. an organ donor on my license. Oh, my cool. uh, uh -oh. my son's mother, my 14... I have two baby mamas. I'm white trash. <laughs> my 14-year-old's mother actually needed a kidney transplant. She was 37 when she... Well, she was diagnosed with a thing called FSGS, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. I can't... Wow. The idea that I still know that in my head, it's crazy to me but she was like we saw her wasting away and it was very scary it was scary for my son it was scary for me to the point where like we were considering getting tested to see if we would be matches not my 14 year old but myself even my my five-year-old's mother we discussed it luckily by the grace of god uh there was a uh a 18 19 year old that was uh, that unfortunately passed away in a car accident oh. but it was a perfect match and she got a kidney transplant she now lives a great life i i watched someone on death's door Right, be able wow. to survive. Uh, my, I have, uh, I, I have three children. My daughter passed away in a car accident, and we were able. She was six weeks old when she died. We were able to donate her heart so that her heart saved somebody else's life. We donated her eyes because when a child is that young, it's very rare that a, a child dies at that age and and was full term. So when she was six weeks old, she passed away in a car accident. We were able to save uh, another child's life with the heart. We were to give another child vision with her eyes. So for me, like, of course, I want organ donation. I'm a huge fan of. But would I donate my body to science? Absolutely not. I saw a story where uh, a, a guy donated his mother's body to science, and then they blew her up with a, a Lockheed rocket. Oh <laughs> that, my God. She wasn't, she, her body wasn't used for science or used mm -hmm. to try and further uh, uh, other people's lives. They used it as a weapons well, test. I, I a so for me, I'm like, no, I won't do science. But yes, for medical, absolutely. I have a friend who went yeah. to med school, and they, they spent a semester in the cadaver lab like med students do. But those are all bodies that have been donated to science. 
Imagine if you're the one that goes to the, the lab at some cut rate med school and a kid gets a C on the project the way you're supposed to, oh, you know, remove the spleen. Oh, he botched it. Uh, C, C minus. Okay, great. There goes Gam Gam on the table. <laughs> but th that's, Rob, what, you, what you, you talked about, that's, first of all, heartbreaking to hear. But you were able to, to do something like that where, you know, you touched the lives of all these other people who were able to, to benefit from that. But that was a very personal and specific thing. It was not commoditized. You didn't take parts or like people don't take uh, donated body parts and sell them for material benefit. And then that person gives it out to the highest bidder. It's when you commoditize the human body and the human existence that it becomes a problem. That's, yeah, that's yeah. where I stand yeah. on that. Think, think, of, Neur think of Neuralink, yeah. like we've mentioned. For the guy who currently has Neuralink, where this guy is a quadriplegic, and now he's now able to move... A, a computer mouse and like play a game of chess with his brain amazing i cried yeah, i cried and showed my 14 year old go we're witnessing history but that's yeah. like to me but the guy, person and that guy even said now i know that there's been some software issues with, with the original patient but he was that's the hardware. one that said i had no reason like i'd get up i had no reason to live yeah. and now i actually have a reason so elon musk say what you will was able to give purpose to a person. And that's the first patient that he's been able to do that with. Yeah. Yeah, these people, sorry, no. these people that are getting the head transplants also, have, at the end of the video, guys watch it, it'll be linked in the description, but they have a thing they put on and they can control stuff even after the transplant, especially during the recovery period. They can control like chairs moving up to them so they can sit down if they're having a hard time moving. It's really, really crazy. So they get wow. Neuralink too. Yeah, basically. A twofer. This, basically. Whole, this whole thing feels like really godless, though, when you get into it. I mean, it's really That's cool to be able to, um, you know, get into a healthier body if you're in an uh, decrepit, like decaying body. But, you know, at the point where you start switching souls around like that, you know, is that like crossing some sort of Rubicon? That Let me ask you, I okay, when it comes to the religious aspect of it, all right, the argument, okay, well, you know, you know, we're all made in God's image, and should we mess with that? Well, what if a guy is fought? Like, look at Christopher Reeve, the guy that was Superman. Yeah. Got thrown from a horse in his 40s, oh, spent the rest so of his sad. life in a wheelchair. So do you look at that and you go, okay, it's messing with nature if you were to give that guy the ability to walk again? or And if so, is that messing with nature in God's image? Is that messing with what God intended? Or... If you do that, you give the person life again. You give that person a purpose. You give them something to be able to do again. So are you now disregarding God's will by giving them that ability? No. No, I, I'm, I'm in support of a situation like that where somebody is injured and can switch into a new situation. But what itself. if God meant for that accident to happen? There was a reason for that accident to happen. And now you're taking away from God's purpose. Like, right, everything, if you, like, this is where I struggle because I, I, I very much fight religion. I And it's not like I, I hate it or I hate people. I just don't understand it, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, things that I don't understand, what's your natural, you resist, right? Mm -hmm. When you don't understand things that are scarier and bigger than you. So when it comes to religion, I look at that and I go, okay, Okay, well, is it is it going against God to fix him, or is it going a God against God to keep him the way right. that he was? Because mm -hmm. maybe God meant for him to get injured and thrown off that horse. If so, for what? What's the purpose? I maybe God meant for us to discover this technology. But I was gonna go ahead. Okay. I totally support that. You know, we have these big, beautiful minds, and God has left us this entire world to discover and create. And if we create science, I don't think there's necessarily a fight between science and religion. I think they have the same basic principles and idea we just observe it differently as humans so i 100 percent think that we should be able to create stuff but there's a morality that goes with it as well that makes it more difficult to draw the line i would do organ donation for sure yeah i would do something like that to save a daughter to save a mom to do whatever i would do that would i want my whole being minus my face to be given to somebody else i don't know that i'm comfortable with that um uh, because a, a mind is just as beautiful. Like there are people that are paralyzed. Their mind is just as beautiful. They can't do as much. I, so I, it's really difficult. It's really, and then would I preserve my consciousness forever? Especially with the way AI is going, I just feel like it would be to my legacy would be totally destroyed after a couple hundred years if I went went up digitally and oh, then everybody I'd get could canceled use my voice. after being dead <laughs> they find there's so many things <laughs> that they would find and part of the human i think the part uh, humans <clears throat> forget trauma yes. in order to survive imagine now having that trauma captured on f 1080p 4k that you can stream at any point on any device that's a scary thought yep yeah i think there's so much uh evil in the world 
stems from the fear of death and that so many people cling on to power and uh, cling on to the promises of technology and make technology do terrible things because they're afraid of dying. And I think death needs to be embraced more by our culture. Obviously, we want to avoid death as much as we can, but death is a fact of life, and I think death gives life its meaning. Because if you were to just live forever, well, then what's the rush to do anything at all? And then also, what's the what's the end goal? Because then it's no longer about having kids to, you know, give a new generation to the earth, and there won't be any new people. It will just be the same exact people with the same exact thoughts, and everything I think will become as stale and boring as generic mass commodities can become yeah. and so i think that uh all this stuff needs to be rejected and i'm i'm pro uh science in the sense of discovering things about the natural world but i am against this like accelerated extremist technological takeover of the globe this extreme technology extreme science i don't think it's good and i think we need to be more comfortable with the fact that life is finite